So this is the supply curve for labor. So when you talk about the supply curve for, for labor, well, they said, they wrote, the supply curve for labor slopes upward from left to right. This is because wages and the quantity of labor supply are proportionally related. So proportionately related. So what does that imply? It means that wage rate is directly, uh, wage rate has a direct relationship with the quantity of sub labor supplied into the market. So what does that mean? It also means that the more, the higher the wage rate, the higher the quantity supply of labor. So if wage rate increases in an economy, the supply for labor will also increase. I mean, the supply of labor in such economy would increase. So here, yeah. So here they said, if wage rate rises, more people will make themselves available for work. The supply curve for labor is shown in figure of this. So let's look at the figure here. Here they wrote, we have uh, the movement here. So we have from zero, the wage, the wage rate per week is from zero to 1,000 and the quantity supply of workers is from zero to 140. So according to this, as the wage rate increases from four or from, okay, let's say when the wage rate is 600, the quantity supply of labor is 40. As wage rate increases from 600 to 800, the quantity supply of labor expands from 40 to 80. So that means that there's a direct relationship between the quantity supply of labor and the wage rate. So the higher the wage rate, the higher the quantity supply of labor. Why? Because workers will have the incentive to really want to work based on high wage rates. So there are other factors. This is a movement along this, the supply of labor curve, which is either to expand or to contract. So if the wage rate falls, the quantity supply of labor will also fall because at that point in time, Workers will not be willing to work. So that is for movement. Then we have factors, other factors that affect the supply of labor, which will shift the supply of labor into the either to the right or to the left. So here it's saying in addition to wages, a number of other factors will affect the supply of in addition to wages, a number of other factors will affect the supply of labor. A country's workforce or its working population includes all those people over the age of 16 or under the age of retirement. A number of factors can affect the size of the mission's workforce, and these are outlined below. The first one, the, other, the first factor that might affect the size of the, the supply of labor is the population size. So when we talk about the population size, we're talking about the total number of people in a country. So if the number of people in the country increases, definitely the number, the supply of labor in such country would also increase. So, and if the number of population, if the population of a country increases, it means that the supply curve for labor will shift right foot from SL1 to SL2. The second one, migration. Migration is also a factor that could affect the supply curve. So here they wrote, many countries welcome immigrants to help increase the working population. So an increase in the working population, an increase in the, an increase in the immigrant population would also mean that Immigrants would not want to come to a country. They want to come to a country to probably work. So as a result of that, it will increase the working population of such countries. So an increase in the immigrants of a country would, may, would lead to an increase in the supply of labor, which means the supply of labor will shift rightward from SL1 to SL2 due to an increase in the number of immigrants coming into the country. The third one, age distribution of the population. So the age distribution of the overall population of a country may have an effect. In most developed countries in the world, there is an aging population. This means that the number of people over the age of above 65 years as a, as a proportion of the total population is increasing. So if the, total, the number of, if the age of people within this age, with, if the age of people are, are around 65 increases, that means the dependency ratio in such country will rise and at the same time, the supply of labor in such country will fall because the, the age at which people, the age, the age range at which people, at the age range that is increasing is a, is a, is, a, is the age that people might not really want to work. So that's the point about that. So for age distribution, we're talking about the age category within the country. So if the age category is high, like those, it, they are aged, they are aging. It means that the supply of labor in such country would fall, shifting the supply curve 
left off from SL2 to SL1. The retirement age. For retirement age, we're talking about the age at which people must attain before they stop, before they, they must attain, before they are entitled to pension or any state benefit. So if the age retirement of a country is short or reduces, that means the supply for labor of labor in such country will fall. And if the age, if the retirement age in a country increases, that means a lot of people will be still be willing to work, will be working. And if voluntarily they might retire, but if they retire voluntarily, they won't be, they might not be having access to any state benefits or pension. So if the so what we're saying is this. So if the age population, if the retirement age increases, that means a lot of people will still be at work and will still be in job. For example, the, what happens in UK right now, they said the, uh, a, lot of, a lot of jobs are available. The demand for labor increases in the UK. Why? Because the retirement, retirement age is less and a lot of people are already retired. So the UK government is trying to, you know, the job centers are trying, you know, the UK government, I think they are trying to make a policy to increase the age, uh, the retirement age. And if that is done, it will enable workers to stay more in service, in active, in active service than inactive. It makes workers to be more active. It makes the population to be more active than inactive. So government will be able, and government could do that by increasing the wage rates or by increasing the minimum wage. That would be an incentive for people to still want to work or to stay at job. Or government might also increase the pensions, which means that anyone that wants to stay, would be, anyone that is willing to stay until the retirement age will be able to benefit from the increase in pension. The school living age. For the school living age, we're talking about the, the age at which people must reach before they leave school to seek for employment. So if the age, if the school living age increases in, a, in an economy, it means that the supply of labor in such a country would fall because people will stay longer in school than what how they used to stay. So the supply curve for labor will shift left toward from SL2 to SL1. The next one is female participation. When we talk about female participation, we're talking about the total number of women that are engaged, that are living that traditional role, the, the, the traditional role of women that's been in the kitchen or been at home that are changing that housewife mentality to like working class. So if more female, more females are into the labor industry or the, to the, into the labor market, it will increase the supply of labor into the market from SL1 to SL2. The next one is skills and qualification. So the supply of labor will tend to increase if people become more employable. This can happen if people have good skills and are well qualified. The quality of labor is discussed in more detail. So the more skillful individuals are, or the more qualified they are, they become more attractive to firms. As a result of that, they will be willing to they will be willing to apply for jobs. So if people are in large proportion of the population is skilled and qualified, it means they will be making themselves available for jobs, which means that the, the supply curve will shift from SL to SL1 to also to. And the last one we need to talk about is labor mobility. And when we talk about labor mobility, we're talking about the ease at which an individual can move from one geographical area or location to another for to find jobs. So if there's an increase in labor mobility, this might mean that the supply of labor will shift, the supply curve for labor will shift rightward from SL1 to SL2. But if it is difficult for workers to to be labor mobile, if it is difficult for workers, or if it is difficult, or if labor mobility is reducing, that means the supply of labor will also reduce. So that's how about that's all about the supply of, of labor and the movement that causes supply of labor to either move contract or to expand. So that's all about social. Uh, that's all about supply of labor. Thank you.